Let's say you have a very simple Node.js application and you just want to deploy it on a server so that other people can use it. The application is super small and you don't want to dockerize it, but you also don't want to copy files manually. In this episode, I will show you the simplest way of moving a Node.js application to the server in an organized fashion. We will use shipit.js in order to do that. Our hypothetical application consists of only one file, server.js. It is the same file we used in the previous episodes. It is an express application with MongoDB as a database. Now, let's connect with the Ubuntu server I've just created. We will deploy our application there. You can use Google Cloud, AWS, or another cloud provider to launch your server. I used DigitalOcean. Before we start, make sure you can log into the server without the password by using your authentication key. In home directory of the root user, there should be a .ssh folder and inside an authorized keys. Put there the content of your idrsa.pub file. If you don't have an idrsa key, don't worry. I will add a link to a GitHub article which will explain how to create it. As I mentioned before, we'll use shipit.js in order to deploy the application. We don't want to install it to the project as a dependency. So let's create a deploy folder. And create a new npm package there. We use y flag which omits all the questions from npm wizard. Ok, now let's add shipit CLI along with the shipit deploy as a dependencies. Next step will be to create a shipit file.js. There we'll put all shipit configuration. We will use an example from the documentation. Now we have to adjust the configuration. We have a default section which contains all defaults. And then we have different stages. In the example there is only a staging environment. We will use that. Ok, so let's copy our code to the var www episode 9. Now create this folder on the server. pflag creates nested directories. And we see that it is empty. Go back to the configuration. By default, shipit takes the code from the git repository, not from the local folder. So let's change the repository URL to match our episode 9 code. And now let's define where our staging server is. We'll use root user. Ok, so now let's deploy it for the first time. Since we installed shipit locally, we can either execute it from node modules.bin shipit or we can use npx shortcut from npx package. We'll use that. Now we specify the environment, which is staging. And the task, we use deploy which was added by shipit deploy plugin. We see that shipit executes different deploy tasks. First, it fetches the code to the local folder. Then, it creates a new release folder on the remote server. And copy files there. Finally, it performs publish task. And does some cleaning. Ok, let's see our server. We have two new folders. In releases we have one release, which was just created. And we see that the current folder links to this release. This is how Shipit handles different releases. Let's perform another deployment. Wait a little bit. Go back to the server. And now we have a new release. And current links to it right now. This structure gives Shipit the ability to easily roll back to the previous release in case of failure. Let's see this in action. Now, instead of the deploy task, we'll use rollback. 
go back to the server. Now current links to the previous release. Okay, since we have the code on the server, now let's run it and see if it works. We will need two things, Node and Mongo installed on the server. There are a lot of tutorials explaining how to install Node and Mongo on an Ubuntu server. Basically, it comes down to executing a couple of commands. First, refresh the local package index in our Ubuntu instance. Then, install Node.js along with npm. Confirm the installation. OK, now it's done for MongoDB. It wasn't so complicated. Since we have everything now, let's check if it works. Enter the current folder. Install packages. We use production flag which omits all dev dependencies. We don't need them on our server. OK, now run the server with node and variable set to production because we installed only production dependencies. And the server is working. Let's see one of server pages. Enter server IP and the port, which was 4040. Boom, we have hello world message. But we don't want to enter the server after each deployment, reinstall the npm packages, and then reset the node app. It should be automatic. So let's go back to our shipit file and create a task which will install all npm packages. Shipit has two kinds of tasks, regular tasks and those which block the entire shipit process until they finish. npm install should be done in parallel, so we'll use blocking task. Paste it to our file. Next, we give it a name. Let's use npm install. We also have to define an actual task. We will use shipit remote async function, which executes scripts on remote servers. And write the npm install command. Don't forget to put the production flag. We have to execute it within the current release. OK, we have a task. Now we have to plug it into our deploy process. When you visit the shipit deploy documentation, you can see all tasks which are executed when we run shipit staging deploy. We see that when the code is updated, before the simic change, updated event is triggered. So let's use this knowledge. Define that when the event occurs, start our task. Stop the server and go to the folder above. Now let's rerun our deployment. Now after every deploy, ship it will install all dependencies. Let's go back to the server again. We see that node modules were installed. But installing a node modules in every deployment is not efficient. A better way would be to share node modules folder between deployments and install only new dependencies. In order to do that, we can use shipit shared plugin. Let's install it first. Now initialize shipit shared in config and add node modules to shared directories. When node modules somehow will be in our repository, they should be overwritten by the shared version on our server. Let's deploy it again. We see that Shipit performs new tasks, which relates to sharing.
visit the server again. When we list all folders, we see that there is a new shared item with node modules inside. And our current release has a symlink to this node modules folder. You can add this way logs, files created by users like uploaded photos or other things which should be shared between deployments. The last thing what is missing is a task which will run the server and restart it after every deployment. Let's use forever in order to do that. Forever is an npm package which ensures that your application runs forever. Let's install it on our server as a global package. Having that, we can now create two tasks. One, which will run the app. Let's define a command as a separate variable. We'll set node n to production. Then we run forever with start command and point the file. We have to run the command within the deployment folder because forever remembers where it was launched and it has to be restarted in the same place. Let's use it right away. Instead of deploy task, we'll use newly created server start. And visit the website. It works. Go back to the setup file. The second task will be to restart the app. Change the name. Command will be restart all. And let's launch this task after the publication. Okay, let's see if that works. Before that, make a change in the route that we could verify if it was updated. Commit all changes and push them to the repo. Because as you remember, we deployed the code from the GitHub repository, not from our local copy. And we push the commit to the Git repository. Deploy the code for the last time. We see that the new code has been fetched. Now let's refresh the page. And everything works. You have a fully deployable application. Now you can add more environments to the configuration and drag different branches. For instance, you can deploy the dev branch to a different folder. Or we can add .env to shared files and specify different ports for each version. This is everything for now. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, subscribe to the channel and see you next week.